On this episode of the Tequila Ombre, we're taking a look at Don and Selmo's 100% Agave Blanco, right here on the Tequila Ombre, coming up next. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Tequila Ombre. We were taking a look at and doing a tasting and review of Don and Selmo's Blanco. Now, uh, a little information about the distillery where this is made. It is made at NOM 1424, which is Destiladora de Agave Azul. It is located in San Juanito de Escobedo in the Los Valle, Valles region or the Valley uh, of Jalisco. Uh, now, this is a fairly new distillery. It was formed in 1996 and is currently operated by Jose de Jesus Garcia. Okay, so let's get a little bit into the making of this tequila. Uh, it is made with a state of grown agave. So all the agave that they use is grown on their state there. Uh, one thing that uh, is really interesting with this uh, distillery is that they process their own bagasse, their, the fibers and stuff after they do the extraction and they uh, make fertilizer with it and they use that to fertilize their agave fields. Uh, right now, they're currently also working on getting uh, organic certified. So um, their agave typically take around five years to mature uh, before they hit the 24 bricks um, level in which they use for making tequila. So uh, they take their estate of grown agave, they process them, and then they cook them using an autoclave at high pressure. So typically at high pressure, it cooks a lot faster than when they use no pressure or low pressure. Uh, what I have been told as well is that they have built a clay horno and are in the process of doing trials with that uh, and testing it. So we should could see them using um, clay hornos in the future. Now, after it is done um, cooking in the autoclave, it is then sent off for extraction where it's shredded and then run through a roller mill. Now, they use two different types of extraction methods on it two different types of mill so they run it through a roller mill twice and then after they're done uh, with two passes through a roller mill they then use a screw mill to get the last bits of uh, sugar uh, out of the agave fibers so after it is done with extraction they then uh, ferment in stainless steel tanks and then it is two times distilled in a stainless steel uh, still with copper coils and then after it is done with distillation, it goes straight into the bottle. This this uh, Blanco does not see the inside of a barrel at all. Although the Norma does say that it can rest up to two months in a, in a barrel and still be called a Blanco. Uh, this particular Blanco does not see the inside of a barrel. Currently, this uh, tequila is not imported into the U.S., uh, but they're working on do, doing a rebranding where we'll see a new label, a new bottle, uh, a new presentation uh, before it is imported into the U.S. So you're kind of getting a sneak peek uh, at this tequila. Uh, it is currently available in Mexico only at this time, I believe. I don't think you can find it anyplace else but inside Mexico. Now, since they're changing the uh, bottling and the presentation, uh, we're not going to do a dive down and taking a look at this bottle because it will probably change here before it's imported into the U.S. Uh, so we're just going to get right onto the tasting. All right, so now let's get into the tasting. As usual, I'll be using a Jerito Stazel nosing glass. This is for the uh, 40 proof uh, as well as for aged expressions. Um, just so you know, these bottles were provided to me for uh, review for an honest review. I have not been paid for the review, so this will be 100% completely honest uh, as I never believe in doing a biased review for you guys. So you know what you're getting into um, if you buy it or are looking to buy it. All right, so um, just got pour in the glass here. Now, looking at it on the glass, uh, there's some pearls stuck to the glass and everything, but it doesn't really coat the glass very well. So I'm going to say it's probably really light on the mouthfeel, um, but we'll, we'll check it out on the nose. I do get some well water, clean some mineral well water, um, 
cleanliness to it. There's light cooked agave, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of sweetness from the agave in there, uh, maybe a little bit of vanilla. A little bit of cinnamon. But it's not very complex. It's not as complex as some other Blancos that I've done the reviews for. All right, let's see how it tastes. All right, so it is light on the mouthfeel. It's not as oily and creamy as some of the other ones that I've reviewed. Uh, and I think that could be... Um, Due to the low, the, the short time that it is, the agaves are are um, grown. Normally, like on some of the other tequilas that I've tasted, that where they had the really nice creamy blancos, uh, they had older agaves. So it's typically seven, eight years. This is five years, so there's not a lot of that really nice agave residual sugar after the distillation um, that you can pick up in this. So it's lacking on the. Um, on the agave flavor, it's there, but it's not as uh, strong and um, powerful as I typically like in a uh, in a blanco, like some of the other blanco tequilas that I've um, I've reviewed. Uh, I get a little bit of the cooked agave, a little bit of vanilla in there. Uh, it's got a floralness to it. It's actually not bad. It's just very light. You know what this would be good for? Um, this would be good for sipping as an aperitif, like before a meal, um, where you want something light and not uh, overpowering on the flavor profile. Uh, this would be really good for that. I'm afraid, though, it would get lost in um, cocktails that, where the agave just isn't strong enough to really give you a any uh, added agave flavor uh, in mixed drinks. Um, but overall, uh, I would say this is a, a good uh, entry-level tequila for somebody that's just getting into it, that kind of wants to explore the flavor profile but doesn't want a, a powerful flavor profile to start. Uh, it's very light. Uh, it's um, very crisp. Uh, it's got you know, the cooked agave flavor in there. It's got a little vanilla. Uh, I don't get anything from it that's off-putting at all. Um, I think this could be uh, enjoyable for an entry-level person. I know that uh, it sells for around 350 pesos or so in Mexico. So that's roughly $15. So that's uh, for that price, um, this is not bad as far as having a little sipper um, to, uh, to drink in the afternoons or on a hot day or something uh, with the light uh, tequila taste to it. Well, that's it. That's uh, my review. Um, if you've tried it, I'd love to see your comments. If you have questions about the brand, uh, please post your comments below. Don't forget to give us a like. Don't forget to subscribe. I've got some amazing uh, reviews coming up um, that I know you guys are going to want to want to check out. Some really good tequilas lined up, as well as some really good videos with some information. So don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and until our next video, uh, as I usually always say. Life is too short to drink bad tequila. Salute.